think of the tank and live. Well, you gotta try that, Dan. <laughs> don't get smart with me. Dad's always said that, don't they? Don't get smart with me. Just once you wanna go, huh? <laughs> Getting the car was a big deal. Dad, can I use the Bonneville? Can I get the Bonneville? No, take the Rambler. It's got a pink door. You're lucky when I was a kid, there were no cars. Come on, Dad, let me use the Bonneville. Well, where are you going? Around the block. How many kids? Half a kid. They give you that little speech when they give you the keys. Now, I'm not giving you this car so you can wreck it. Well, then I don't want it. You get the car, you're, oh, you pick up a hundred friends, I got the car, I got the car. <laughs> then you hit that tank. <laughs> you didn't even know you were in the desert, did you? <laughs> then that guy from the station comes out named Smitty. Gives you that look. Mm. Is this your dad's Bonneville? <laughs> What'd you do, hit a tank? <laughs> Listen, Louie, I know your dad. Why don't you go in, lay under the hoist, I'll crush your legs. <laughs> well, my dad was funny though. When, <laughs> and you have to pull that out, that tire scraping and talking to you on the way home. Wait till you get home, you're gonna have uh, yeah. You get that home, your dad comes out and looks at it. What'd you do, hit a tank? <laughs> then you gotta work on the car with your dad? Oh, what's worse than that, huh? He jacks the car up, lays underneath it. Your job, hand him tools. <laughs> Give me that 916. Huh? Here, take them all. <laughs> then you'd hear under there, Dah! he did his knuckle on something. <laughs> that tool would come flying out. <laughs> Look out, it's a 916. <laughs> then he'd blame you. Get out of my life. And you'd look down at that jack and you'd think, college or prison? <laughs> well, I would certainly, I would certainly like to welcome you all home. I'd also like to take the opportunity to welcome home all the Vietnam veterans. And I hope in my heart, and, and I hope in my heart, just like in all of your hearts, that this is the last welcome home celebration we have to have from any war. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Good night. that whatever these innocent people are called, they are, in fact, hostages. I will hold the government of Iraq responsible for the safety and well-being of American citizens held against their will. Ladies and gentlemen, our next host, Mr. Glenn Ford. When, when they invited me here, I was most pleased to come and accept their invitation. But I told them, I said, what do I say? What do I do? I mean, I'm not an entertainer in that respect. I can't play a musical instrument or I can't, I can't dance. I can't do a lot of things. But they said, well, what you do, maybe you can tell us a story about your, one of your experiences when you were in, during World War II when you served there and in, of course, Vietnam. And I do remember one incident in Vietnam, which I'll never forget. I was out on the 
DMZ, laying in the mud in the rain, and a little gunny sergeant crawled up the side of me, and he, there was a long pause, and he finally said, Colonel, I guess. There another long pause, and he said, uh, are you Glenn Ford? And I said, yes. That was another long pause. He kept looking at me. And then he looked at me and he said, well, hell, man, you're just like us. <laughs> True. Thank you. Thank you. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you from the United States Air Force, the singing sergeants. Here they are. Everybody here thought that what they missed the most about home was Thanksgiving, Christmas, home-cooked food, and the rest. But I know what you really missed. You may think that I don't know, but I know. The thing that you missed the most was those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 
<laughs> so to bring you guys up to date, here's our next guest who's brought his comic insight to that very subject. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ray Stevens. On a chicken farm just downstream from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. A nuclear reactor leaks some water accidentally. What happened next is like a horror story by Ralph Nader. That toxic waste leaked into a rude house in Decatur. Inside that chicken coop, they always kept the TV on. Said it helped the chicks to grow, helped to keep them calm. As four little chickens put that heavy water down their gullets, the Kung Fu show was on the air and something happened to those pullets. They began to grow and grow with that Kung Fu show locked in their brains. That's the only way we can explain. Kung Fu chickens Chicken. Big as a house, strong as a dickin Chicken. Anything they want is easy picking For teenage mutant Kung Fu chicken One said his name was Fricassee The second cordon blue The third was Cacciatore And the fourth they just called Stew they could have been dangerous having grown so big on heavy water But they decided they would live their lives on the side of law and order Teenage mutant kung fu roosters Bad guys won't have it easy like they used to They come with taekwondo and all the fixin' They're teenage mutant kung fu chicken So it wouldn't lose the farm when these four big pullets with black scarves around their forts come over that hill yonder and peck them bankers on the heads and drop them like green persimmons. Then they went down to the bottom 40 and commenced to scratch around as chickens as want to do. And before you know it, they'd plowed that whole field ready for planting. Yeah, they saved our farm. Anything they want is easy picking For teenage mutant kung fu chicken Teenage mutant kung fu chicken Cock-a-doodle dude And the Air Force uh, has never been the decisive factor in, in a battle in the history of war. of our troops put on in the Gulf was something. Wait until you see this next group. They give a whole new meaning to the word precision. Now kids, don't try this at home. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the United States Army Drill Team. gentlemen, Alan Alda. Oh. Is that drill team something? I, I, when I was in the Army, I, I used to do a close order drill like that, and they gave me KP. Those guys are great. I'm here tonight because I want to say one simple thing. Welcome home, folks. Welcome home. Welcome home. You don't know how good it feels to stand up here and see your faces and to see them here. I know I speak for millions of Americans when I say that we want you to know how grateful we are for the sacrifices you made, for the time you set aside in your lives, for risking your lives. We know it's cost you a lot, and we know it's cost your families a lot, too. But when you were called, you served, men and women alike. We're saddened as you are by the, by the thought of those whose lives have been lost, and of those whose lives have been changed by, by being among the wounded. And we know that each one of you must have realized, as we did, that no one knew who would have to make those ultimate sacrifices. Your courage has made us here at home feel a little stronger. So I have a very simple message tonight. It's very short, very much from the heart. We missed you. We worried about you. And we're glad you're coming home again.
And to help convey our gratitude, here are two multi-Grammy award-winning gospel artists joined by the Eastern, Eastern High School Choir from Washington, D.C., ladies and gentlemen, B.B. and C.C. Wynan. The young people in this choir have an extra special reason to celebrate tonight because one of their alumni has just returned from the Persian Gulf and is here singing with them this evening. Please welcome back Naval Airman Aaron Lomax. Aaron, hey. Welcome home. Thank you. Thank you. Take a back. And now, under the direction of Ms. Joyce Garrett, the Eastern High School Choir, on their own, right here.
ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Orlando. What a night for me. The good Lord has blessed this to be my birth date and has given me and has given me the opportunity to, to work for the president and Mrs. Bush and family and for the greatest military of all time. I'm not much of a songwriter, but I wanted very much to write this song for all of you. It goes something like this. With every yellow ribbon, every yellow ribbon, every yellow ribbon we tie around the tree. We pray so we know we can say, you will be coming home, and it won't be long. With every yellow ribbon, every yellow ribbon, Every yellow ribbon we tie around the tree We pray so we know that someday You're coming home to be Home with your family That's why we tie them Just to show you that we care We know it's cold and so lonely out there We know you're facing the eye of a storm, but you're not alone anymore. No, not in this war. There are the doors and the cars and the trees. They're tied as far as your eyes can see. We know you'll be coming home soon. Back to the land of the free. Home of your family. That's why we'll tie them up. Just to show you that we care. While the whole world is praying for peace, everyone under the sun is wearing one. That's why we'll tie them, just to show you that we care. We know there's danger and darkness out there. We know you're facing the eye of a storm, but you're not alone anymore. No one in this war. They're on the doors and the cars and the trees. Oh, we know you'll be coming home soon Back to the land of the free Home with your family That's why we'll tie them Just to show you that we care like you and I came again to say thank you to each and every one of you. Please welcome Mr. Richard Thomas.
From the very beginning, our country has borne witness to scenes of farewell. Fathers, mothers, sons and daughters saying goodbye. They smiled and they chatted about everything except the reason they were there. But just as the bus was about to leave, the ship about to sail, the plane about to take off, the last words were perhaps the most touching of all. Please write, followed by the promise, I will. Dear mom and dad, my thoughts are with you always. I'm looking forward to the time that we can be with each other once more. We're wintering at a place called Valley Forge. It is unbearably cold here, but thoughts of you keep me warm. It always helps to have an uplifting talk from our commanding officer. This morning, General Lee gave a stirring speech, and then it was back to work detail. A few days ago, I saw my first Yankee soldier. He wasn't any older than me. We just looked at each other through the clearing for a couple of seconds, and then he was gone. I think maybe he smiled at me, but I'm not sure. About the other thing that you mentioned, I am taking care of myself, Mom, if you can possibly do that, sitting in a trench in the rain in France. Mr. Cohan's song, Over There, is a big hit over here. I got your last letter. I just could not believe that you actually got a job in an aircraft factory. The next time I see one of our planes fly over, I'll think maybe you helped build it. Mom, I didn't know you could do things like that. Tell me, does the new television set really bring in Syracuse? The first TV on our block, and I'm in Korea when you get it. Well, anyway, I bet you're popular with the neighbors. We got a chance to listen to Armed Forces Radio and we heard the play-by-play -play of the first Super Bowl. It was great. You think there'll be another one next year? Now, this seems too good to be true, but there's a rumor going around that some of us might be coming home from the Gulf. I don't know when I'll be home, but it could be soon. You want to know something funny? I just looked around, and I think everyone is writing the same thing to their folks. I guess every soldier who's ever been to war looks forward to the time he'll be able to say, hey, I'm home. I'm home. A letter for all time. And now, a song for all time. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes Storm. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory.
not too long ago, President Bush asked a couple of national songwriters to compose a song with a special theme. He then asked a certain artist to record it. Here is the song, Point of Light, and the young man who made the president and millions of other people happy. Here is Randy Travis. <laughs> Is a point when you cannot walk away, when you have to stand up straight and tall and mean the words you say. There is a point you must decide just to do it cause it's right. That's when you become a point of light. There is a darkness. That everyone must face It wants to take what's good and fair And lay it all to waste And that darkness Covers everything inside Until it needs a single point of light All it takes is a Reaching out to feed the hungry Reaching out to save the land Reaching out to help their fellow man There are dreamers Who are making dreams come true Taking time to teach the children There's nothing they can't do Giving shelter to the Giving hope to those without That is what this country is all about One by one From the mountains to the sea Points of light are calling out to you and me All it takes is a Yeah. 
Brennan. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Sophia Loren. Thank you very much for your warm and affectionate welcome. I remember all the people who have lost their freedom. I remember the American army liberated my hometown, Pozzuoli, which is a little town near Naples. Of course, you know I'm Italian. Yeah. The little girl I was then never dreamt of ever being able to thank you for that freedom given to us so many years ago. And I never dreamt of addressing such an awesome gathering of representative from so many nations, united in their will to fight, if necessary, to die for the freedom of men and women they've never met. I'm grateful to be here in order to say, yes, I will always remember. And so, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great joy and honor for me to present to you this evening the President of the United States of America, Mr. George Bush. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys don't follow orders very well. Good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on. Thank you, guys. Look. It is, please be seated. Thank you all very, very much. That's the way you follow orders. That's the way you follow orders. How'd we ever win the war? Look, what a pleasure it is to be here, surrounded by, by stars. And I'm not just talking about the wonderful folks from Nashville and Hollywood and New York. I'm also talking about the real stars, the men and women of Operation Desert Storm. Just, you know, it's just a few short weeks ago, the fighting in the Persian Gulf ended in complete victory for the coalition forces. And I promised then that we would begin bringing Americans back as quickly as possible. And tonight, I have the privilege of welcoming you home. And I'm delighted to see you here at Andros Air Force Base. When Barbara and I came here to say congratulations to you and to all the men and women in our armed forces. You know, America rediscovered itself during Desert Storm. First-rate military leaders executed a sound battle plan and delivered a swift victory. Men and women of all races and backgrounds worked together, turning blueprints into triumphs. And while we freed a tiny nation we also regained confidence in America's special decency, courage, compassion, and devotion to principle. 
The cause of freedom demands much from free people and millions of Americans sacrificed in millions of ways during Desert Storm. Our hearts go out to the friends and families of those who serve but will never return. And to all those who gave their lives for this country, we will never forget you or what you have done. I can't tell you how happy I am to be here with you tonight every single day. I feel a special sense of joy and gratitude for you and all who served. And when you freed Kuwait, you uplifted the American spirit. Thanks to you all, and may God bless each and every one of you. Good night, and thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lynn Redgrave. Thank you. One thing became clear during the Gulf crisis is that you can't underestimate the abilities of women. Now, you may not... <laughs> I don't know this, but last summer when things were heating up in the Gulf, President Bush's decision to hang tough was heartily endorsed as only a British woman could do it. Margaret Thatcher, then the Prime Minister of the country of my birth, the United Kingdom, gave him this advice. George, this is no time to go wobbly. <laughs> now, it's quite common here in America to hear people speak of the beauty of women and the bravery of men. And although women have taken part in every military crisis since the American Revolution, we don't often speak of their courage of acts or heroism. Well, tonight, we want to remind everyone that the Gulf War was one in which the women shared the duty and the danger. So many women taken part in a military action and performed so many different tasks. Some of the troops jokingly called it Mum's War, but there wasn't much laughter when we watched wives and mothers say goodbye to their husbands and their tearful children as they left to carry out their duties in the Gulf. Like the men, they too were scared, but they had a job to do, and they did it. And we want to say thanks on behalf of a grateful nation. And tonight we proudly acknowledge not only the beauty of our service women, but their courage as well. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, Mrs. Bush, please welcome country star Katie Oslin.
Welcome, Mr. Gary Morris. During the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln went to visit the site of one of the bloodiest battles in the history of our country. On his way to the scene of the battle, while riding on a train, he jotted down some thoughts on the back of an envelope. He believed the world would little note nor long remember what would be said that day commemorating the fallen soldiers. But he was wrong. 
The speech he delivered has come to be known as the Gettysburg Address. And though most of us are familiar with the opening lines, four score and seven years ago, and the final words, that this government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. It is a certain phrase that he used in the middle of the speech that has great resonance for us today as we honor our troops, some of whom return in glory, and others who gave, in Lincoln's words, the last full measure of devotion. history of America. There are names that shine like beacons in the night. The patriots where vision gave us meaning, who kept the lamp of freedom burning bright. In the long and honored history of America, there are those who paid the last and final price Who were called upon by chance Or desperate circumstance To make the ultimate sacrifice A grateful nation bows its head in sorrow And in thanks for guarantee the last full measure of devotion that's what they gave to the cause the last They cannot hear our applause We honor them forever And keep alive their story Pay tribute to their lives And give them all the glory Last full measure of emotion Beyond the call of to serve the greater needs for those who did survive and came back home alive they join in praise of comrades who were slain and why we resolve most highly resolve that these dead Shall not have died in vain. Last full measure of emotion beyond the call of duty where there needs. Last full measure of devotion they gave themselves. To serve the greater needs And for those who did survive And came back home alive They join in praise of comrades who were slain And finally resolved Most highly resolved
All-Star Salute to Our Troops will continue. to thank you. I mean, I, you, people don't get a chance like this to thank you for, for, our, for our freedom. And, and I just, th th I'm just excited. I'm jazzed about being here. I think I'm feeling farfanugan. I don't know what that is, but I think I am. I'm supposed to make an announcement before I go on. I've never been on an Air Force base before. This is great. I, um, I'm, uh, well, the owner of a 1983 gray and green F-16 parked by the side door, you left your lights on. <laughs> Listen, you people are so generous. You really are with your, with your lives and the sacrifice and the time that you, for, for us, for everybody that lives in, under a democracy, even, even coming here today, the generosity, you know, look at what the guy gave me. He gave me a camouflage bag. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> how does this work? I don't know, it's so, but how does this work, camouflage? The, the, the military comes up with the highest in technology, heat-seeking missiles, the Patriot, the radar, and then count. this is supposed to look like a forest, right? <laughs> I don't understand the deal here, and I see guys in battle wearing uniforms like this, and they have a helmet with two twigs on, and they walk around like, nobody can see me. <laughs> I would think that this is just an idea. If you wanted the uniform to look like a forest, shouldn't it just be like one tree with a squirrel here? <laughs> So, and you know what, really, this really messed me up, but maybe you can answer this. I was walking around the base today, I saw a plane painted like that. How does that work? So, so if this thing is flying over enemy territory, what happens? The enemy says, don't shoot it, it's not a plane, it's a flying forest. Could kill a squirrel. <laughs> this is amazing. This whole operation was amazing. And we watched it at home here. We watched it on CNN. That was a, we've never been able to watch a war before. For, the, 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 a lot of you people watch it on television. It's so weird. Bernard Shaw, one of the classiest guys in broadcasting, he was under a bed for four hours. <laughs> he had like dust bunnies in his hair. And I, he just, this is Bernard Shaw coming to you from, and, the, and that John Holloman guy was there that first night in Baghdad, and they were asking him, he says, missiles were coming down like the 4th of July, let me stick my head farther out the window and get a better look. <laughs> you idiot, get under the bed! <laughs> and that first night, did you watch this? The first night in Jerusalem, the first night they sent missiles to Jerusalem, they had that Larry Register guy, he was nervous, the bureau chief. He was just like walking around and, and they got a, they got a, he, he didn't know what, he heard voices from Atlanta. He didn't know what. <laughs> and they said to him, they said to him, Larry, was, what is, was it conventional warfare or was it chemical warfare? And he went, hang on a minute. For 35 years, and I, I, I had a call come in. <laughs> I've been alive for 35 years. I go around the street. I ask people just a normal conversation. What do you do? How many Middle East experts can there be? <laughs> Every station had a Middle East expert. But I think the biggest thanks, the biggest thanks has to come from the future of, of our country. I'm from Canada, from all of North America, from all, anybody under democracy. And the future of our country is our children. So representing the children. My name is Bobby. I will thank the men and women of the armed services for our freedom. And it's also, it's also about some, some candy that I have backstage. <laughs> and it goes like this. Thank you, thank you men and women of the armed forces for our freedom. Now I'm gonna go backstage and get my candy because I want to eat them. Thank you very much.
As far as Saddam Hussein being a great military strategist, he is neither a strategist nor is he schooled in the operational art, nor is he a tactician, nor is he a general, nor is he as a soldier. Other than that, he's a great military man. I want you to know that. Welcome the United States Naval Academy Glee Club. Distinguished Academy Award winning actor, Mr. Charlton Heston. The American experience. So far, it seems the most successful, doesn't it? And history, the two centuries of our experiment in freedom is an eye blink, but we're still here. We may not have been able to make democracy spread, but we have made it prosper. This country is what we've been from the beginning, an example to the world. Man can live free. In America, democracy works, not as well as we need it to work in these troubled times, but we're still, to the rest of the world, the shining door to freedom. Why? Why is this? Our system? Sure, that's part of it. The American dream, which is not success, but freedom. It's not only that, though. Other countries have cherished that dream and lost it. Well, what then? Are we smarter? More determined? Is it luck? The 
grace of God. I think it's partly the land itself, that broad swell of continent between those shining seas. From the very beginning, before we were Americans, we were captivated by the land. We belonged to the land before the land was ours, Carl Sandburg wrote. Our writers have always tried to define America. I took what some of them, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Tom Paine, Martin Luther King, Samuel Eliot Morrison, William Faulkner, Thomas Wolfe, and Abraham Lincoln wrote. And I put it into one paragraph about this country. Eight different men writing in three different centuries. Here's what they all said. I have a dream. I refuse to accept the end of man. I believe he will endure. He will prevail. Man is immortal, not because alone among God's creatures he has a voice, but because he has a soul, a spirit, capable of compassion and sacrifice and endurance. This is particularly true about America and Americans. It is a fabulous country, the only fabulous country, where miracles not only happen, they happen all the time. As a nation, we have maybe uniquely a special willingness of the heart, a blithe fearlessness, a, a simple yearning for right and justice that in our revolution lit a fire that can never be stamped out. It is the living, fruitful spirit of this country. These are the times that try men's souls, the sunshine patriots and the summer soldiers will in this crisis shrink. But he that stands and bears it now will earn the thanks of man and woman. We must bind up the nation's wounds with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right. Let us finish the work we are in. With that, to the men and women we honor here tonight, I add only two words of my own. Welcome home. As president, I can report to the nation, aggression is defeated, the war is over. We're coming home now, proud, confident, heads high. We are Americans. Hey, bud. How you doing? Gosh, you got big. Welcome home!